Hi folks, Dane here and welcome to another episode of 5 Bookish Facts. So today we're doing something a little bit different as you might have guessed by the title and we're going to do 5 Bookish Facts about the Man Booker Prize. So the Man Booker Prize for fiction used to be called the Booker McConnell Prize and most people just know it as the Booker Prize. Yes, I am getting this information from Wikipedia and it's specifically awarded every year for the best original novel that's written in English and published here in the UK. It was first awarded in 1969 which means that next year's one the 2019 one will be the 50th anniversary and the Booker Prize is just weird if you just look at some of the books that have been nominated for and won it you start to realize it's not just your average literary prize before I get started I should point out that this idea was suggested by Miriam from Between Lines and Life so be sure to check out her channel and do leave a comment on this video as well with any suggestions you have for future episodes. So it could be, you know, books, series, authors, genres, literary awards, publishers, agents even. Whatever you want an episode on, just leave a comment and let me know and I'll try and get to as many of them as possible. So without further ado, five facts about the Man Booker Prize. Let's go. Fact number one, and this is my favourite. So in 1977, the chair of the panel was poet Philip Larkin, and Larkin wanted Paul Scott's staying on to win. And he actually threatened to jump out of the window if it didn't win. Luckily for everybody involved, it did win, and Larkin didn't jump out of the window. Jonathan Cape is actually the publisher with the most winning titles, so they've got eight winners, and I'm going to read these off for you here, right. So we've got The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes, which was 2011. We've got The Gathering by Anne Enright, which was 2007. Amsterdam by Ian McEwan in 1998. The Famished Road by Ben Ockery in 1991. Hotel du Lac by Anita Bruckner in 1984. Midnight's Children by Sam and Rushdie in 1981. Savile by David Storey in 1976 and The Conservationist by Nadine Gordimer in 1974. So Faber and Faber comes in second place with six winning titles and the Salmon Rushdie book I mentioned, Midnight's Children, actually won a poll to find the best of Booker. So fact number three, the Booker Prize also comes with some prize money, which has obviously increased throughout the years. And we have heard from some of the winners what they want to do with the money that they've won. So in 1990, A.S. Byatt said she was going to buy a swimming pool for her house. In 1998, Ian McEwen said he'd spend on something perfectly useless rather than spending it on things like bus fares and linoleum. In 2010, Howard Jacobson won and said he was going to buy his wife a new handbag. And in 2015, Marlon James said, I can go to Geeves and Hawks, finally get my Oswald boating suit. The fact number four is that several Man Booker Prize winners have gone on to become movies. Also examples include Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro and The English Patient by Michael and Dutch. Other examples include Midnight's Children by Sam and Rushdie, which we've already mentioned, Life of Pi by Jan Martel, that was a winner, and Possession by A.S. Byatt. Probably the most well-known of all of these adaptations is the adaptation of the 1982 winner, which was called Schindler's Ark, and that was written by Thomas Kennelly. So you've probably heard of it as Schindler's List, as the Steven Spielberg film, and it won multiple awards and kind of went on to become a classic. Fact number five, some research has been carried out to identify the typical Man Booker winner, and that's using historical data from the previous winners. So the average Man Booker prize winner is English, white, privately educated, male, in his late 40s, and he's written a book of less than 500 pages that has a male protagonist. Hurrah for diversity. So there we have it, those are five facts about the Man Booker Prize. Don't forget to leave a comment with your suggestions for future episodes. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more Buckish videos and I will see you again for another video soon. Thanks a lot, bye.